Hello YouTube, uh, this is a follow up of my earlier video about uh, satin tilting on its side as claimed by Denise Chavez Goforth. Um, let's have another quick look at her video before we carry on. Good morning, this is Denise Chavez Goforth and today is December 19th, 2012 at 10.22 a.m. As you all know, we have all been waiting for confirmation from the observ observatories with regard to the, mm, the planets in our solar system and whether or not they have shifted. Well, um, you all already know what happened with um, Jupiter. It's completely on its side. And now I have some images from the Bradford Robotic Telescope that just came into my account just now with regard to Saturn. Uh, let's get right on over to those images right away. There it is. It's on its side. Saturn is on its side, completely on its side, just like Jupiter. Um, here's my request. Saturn. And it says flat field image number eight. Eight has been used to enhance and correct the image. There it is. And then, uh, so this is obviously coming from the Bradford Robotic Telescope. Okay, I'll stop it there. Um, as uh, we saw in my first video that I did on this, um, let me just find the image of Saturn. Okay, uh, De Denise was claiming that this was Saturn on its side. In my first video I showed using the location of the moons here, the orient orientation of Saturn is actually this way, not vertically as she's shown here. In fact we can see on the sides here the, the very edges of the rings of, of Saturn. I've um, done some more research into this and I've got some more information for you on this which I think you'll find very interesting. Uh, I created a, a, an account with the Bradford Robotic Telescope and I've been looking at some images uh, myself. In fact I've even ordered some images. Uh, I've had one come back. Um, but first of all um, I'd like to take you to the Bradford Robotic Telescope Facebook page. Here it is. If you go to Post by Others um, you'll see my post here where I've asked them if they can settle uh, this discussion over the image that has been posted in, in Denise's as claim. I posted uh, Denise's video on the on their Facebook page as you can see and um, Let's have a look. Can the team at Bradford Robotic Telescope settle a debate over the image and claims made in this video that Saturn has tilted on its side? I've stated that the image is overexposed, in fact has CCD sensor bleed through, which has hidden the true image of Saturn behind the spike of light, and Saturn is in fact orientated the correct way. And please see my response video in the comments below. So I've posted Denise's video and I've also posted my response video, uh, the, the video that I've posted before this one. And Bradford Robotic Telescope have responded and they say your response video is very thorough and quite correct. Her image is overexposed. To clarify the point, here is her image, and they give the link, taken at 6.42.57 UTC. The image taken immediately before at 6.42.37 was also of Saturn, but with one tenth of the exposure. Here is that image, and we've got the link there as well. Now it's important to note the timing between these two images. When the Bradford Robotic Telescope uh, process image requests, they do them in batches, and they seem to try and do them in, a, in an intelligent sort of way, so that if they've got lots of requests of Saturn, um, they will take consecutive images, and some of those images, the request will be at um, you know different exposure times, different filters, different settings. So they'll they'll do consecutive images and batch them together so that the telescope is not slewing all over the place. So with these two jobs, the first one is the image requested by Denise Chavez Goforth. We'll look at that one. 
that was at 642.57, but the image taken immediately before was at 642.37, so we're only talking about a difference of 20 seconds. So let's have a look at those images. Here is the first one by Denise Chavez Goforth. Here is the job data. As you can see, the completion time here is on Wednesday 19th December 2012 at 6.42.57. Now if we scroll down, we see the image that has been presented in Denise's video. We can see uh, three moons and we can see two stars, which are the ones that I used to uh, align the images in Starry Night in my first video. Okay, so let's go to the, the second image. Uh, which was in the, the link from Bradford a Robotic Telescope. This is the one that they refer to that was taken 20 seconds earlier than the image uh, taken for Denise. Um, so we can see the time here, Wednesday 19th December at 6.42.37 seconds UTC. And if we scroll down, here is the image. Now this is what Denise's image should have looked like if it was correctly set. Okay. But in the case of this image, we have a 35 millisecond exposure time. In the case of Denise's image, it's set to 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. So the exposure time was too, uh, too long and it, we ended up with an overexposed image. And this resulted in um, CCD pixel bleeding which I'm going to go into shortly I'll explain that a little bit better but um, basically it's an overexposed image and it's not Saturn on its side Saturn is, is hidden here in fact I've I've downloaded these um, these images and I'll pull them up here so we can take a, a good comparison look at them um, now there's the other one the one next to it so here are the two images. This this one is Denise's image, and this is the image that was taken 20 seconds earlier. And as we can see, you know, if you remove the, the spike of light, you can see what's behind it. We can see Saturn correctly orientated as it should be. Okay, I'll just zoom in on that. And the other one, zoom in on that. So we can see that two images. That one is correctly exposed or at least it's a better exposure and this one is overexposed. Okay so the next thing that we're going to look at is um, this phenomena called CCD pixel bleeding. Okay now if I go back to Google and we Google CCD pixel bleeding then we'll get these results here the first one that comes up uh, shows here a an example of a cropped image uh, showing some pixel bleeding. You can see the individual pixels here and you can see the spike of light and in the description underneath uh, it gives as an example one is charge bleeding when a photon hits a CCD pixel I should explain a CCD is a charged couple device which is the sensor in a camera Okay, so when a photon hits a CCD pixel, electronic charge is registered in that pixel. A single CCD pixel can hold only so much charge, much like a bucket can only hold so much water. When the bucket gets full, the water spills out. When the pixel gets full, charge spills out. This spillage of charge is called bleeding because it tends to run down the columns or up the columns depending on your perspective, like blood seeping from a cut. Sometimes the overloading of a pixel is so large that the bleeding goes both up and down. Um, now if I go back and look at the other results here, we've got a couple of PDF um, documents which go into CCD description and characteristics and introduction to CCDs. I've got them here, here's the first one, introduction to CCDs. Now if I do a quick search on that and type in bleed and hit that, here is an example of bleeding and blooming. Now this image is of the uh, M42 or the uh, Great Orion Nebula and you can clearly see the image, uh, the uh, pixel CCD pixel bleeding in this image. You can see these spikes of light. 
Now, if you've looked at the images from Stereo A, Stereo B, the Soho images of the sun, often we see this sort of thing in those images where we get these big spikes of light vertically. They're always vertical. And there's a good reason for that, and we're going to come come to that and have a look. So that's what's going on. Let's see what the next result is. Um, here we go, bleeding and blooming. There's a, a diagram of the, the sensor here explaining how the, um, the spillage works, and the very next one. This is the top-down view of the sensor. So this black spot represents the, the pixel and you can see these orange lines on the side they are channel stops and it says here that the channel stops prevent the charge from spreading sideways but the charge confinement provided by the electrode is less so the charge spreads vertically up and down a column okay so you get the 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 pixel overloads um, it spills over and the charge is going to flow up or down the the column and that's what causes these um, spikes of, of light that we see in the in the images. Now, if I go back to the um, Bradford Robotic Telescope site, they've got an images um, frequently asked questions page. And if we scroll down here, um, what have we got? I have a point-like star images, but some of the brighter ones are vertical lines and thicker in the middle. This is due to overexposure. The CCD converts the photons of light into electrons which it collects in little electrical wells on the surface of the CCD. When these are full, they overflow along the surface of the columns of the CCD. And that's exactly what we're seeing in this image. It's not satin on its side. It's simply spillover of the, um, of the image pixels. They're overloading with light or actually overloading with charge. The electrical charge it's spilling up and down the column and it's created the spike and as we saw in this other image that if it was correctly processed then this is what we would see with the um, with the two side-by-side -side images there's Denise's and there is the other one which is correctly exposed so hopefully that's put that to rest um, these images you know it's all very well to order images from a space telescope if you have little understanding of, of what you're actually looking at and then you're going to make great announcements that um, planets are suddenly tilted on their side well that really um, brings into question your credibility and you know your your um, really what you're doing online um, trying to explain these things to other people as if you really understand what you're talking about. It's sad that this sort of thing is going on. I cop a lot of flack because I de debunk this sort of nonsense. Um, people take great exception to what I do, but you know, would we rather believe in nonsense like this that Saturn has tilted on its side, or would we rather look at the facts and try and weed out the, the, the fiction from the facts and try and arrive at the right answer. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be criticised for what I do. Um, I'm a truth seeker as well, and uh, if that means copping some flack for what I do, well, hey, you know, that's, that's the price I pay. But, you know, there's so many people on, on the internet, on YouTube, on Facebook, that are, that are posting this sort of nonsense and causing panic and fear and a lot of unnecessary anxiety. Uh, you know, I had a lot of emails in the lead up to uh, 21st of December from people who were really concerned about what was going on. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with, with uh, the work that we do on Vortex and uh, other pages such as uh, 2012hoax.org. Um, that is, is now finished its role, of course. Um, but, but, you know, there is a call for people to be debunking this sort of nonsense because it does create a lot of fear and um, it's unnecessary. So hopefully that's cleared that up. This has been a longer video so if you're still with me thank you for hanging in there and as usual check the description area underneath the video. I'll put in a link to my discussion page Voices of Reason to Explain X. Thank you for watching.